Hello everyone and welcome to the next video of our Sisters of Battle Alternative Army. I don't know what this is actually going to be called yet, but in this one we're going to be tackling Urzabel. Ur yeah, Urzabel. Uh, she is going to stand in for our Saint Celestine in, in our army. Uh, and she's an incredible model with a lot of good sculpted detail on her. Uh, we do tackle a couple of extra bits rather than what we've done previously with the, the more basic miniatures, so the sort of standard Battle Sister and the, the Davidian, which are counting as our Sisters Repenta in the army. Um, I go through a few more steps in this just to make her stand out a little bit more so her gold is slightly different and she has six wings, count them, six. There's six wings on this girl. And um, she's turned out quite well, all things considered, that we're still trying to get something done fast and effectively to put an army out on the table in a relatively short space of time. However, she is definitely a standout miniature in the army, and I think, yeah, I think you, I enjoyed this one, so let's just get stuck in, let's just not beat around the bush any longer, and let's see how we paint this. So our first step with uh, Urzabel here, I think I'm pronouncing her name right, is we're going to work on the armour that she's wearing, and because she's going to be our stand-in for Celestine in our army, we're going to be making her very gold, we're going to be making her quite bright. Now we've done gold on the miniatures before, which was just a couple of steps. It was Army Painter Bright Gold with a, a bit of a wash over the top of it. But I want um, our Celestine to stand out a little bit more. So we're going to be starting with a contrast paint. And our contrast paint for choice this time is Nasdrag Yellow. And we're going to be using that as a sort of a base colour just to get the armour up to that kind of goldy yellowy colour that we want. And then from there we're going to be applying uh, a couple of other layers. So if the pot wouldn't snap shut on me, that would be nice too. Make sure that my brush is good because I've been cleaning them and they're a little bit stiff. The bristles are a little stiff. Let's put some of that down on our palette. And we're not worried about being too neat at this point. We're just going to go ahead and give the entire miniature a coat of our Nasdrag. With the Nasdrag Yellow Dry, we're going to move on to our next colour, which is going to be Vallejo Model Colour Brass. And we're going to apply this as a sort of a, an overbrush, which basically is a dry brush, but we're not taking as much paint off the brush. So we've got our dry brush here. Charge it up nicely and then on our piece of paper here. I'm going to do that and remove some of the paint. And then on the miniature, We're just going to use this as a layer of gold over the Nasdrag. And what you can see is that it's starting to bring up a real sheen to her armor, which is what we're aiming for. So we're going to do this, maybe a couple of layers of this, maybe the one will do. And once we have that done, it's then going to be a matter of giving it a little bit of a wash. And then we'll. Um, highlight it with a bit of the original gold colour that we do use. So we're going to do this for a couple of layers, get a nice sheen built up, and then we'll move on. With our overbrush dry, we're now going to move on to uh, Cryptek Armour Shade Gloss, and we're going to give the whole model a little coat of that. We're also going to need to thin it down a little bit because the, the uh, wash itself is quite heavy. So we're just going to add some water to that. And then on the miniature, just a quick coat of this. So with the gold dry, I've decided uh, to not pursue it any further than that. I quite like the sheen. I quite like the the depth that the, the shading has given us. I don't really want to go any further with that. I think the brass is working really well with the wash. So from this stage, we're going to move on. And there's one stage or one step I've done off camera, um, which I have to quickly explain. The model was primed in uh, Citadel Grey Sear, uh, which is just the, the contrast primer sort of paint. But off camera, uh, after the wash on the armor, I uh, took all the parts that were still Grey Sear and gave them a coat of Ulthuan Grey. 
Now, I've went Ulth Wan Grey because it gives me a slightly colder look, a slightly blue sort of grey. It's still a very light grey. It's lighter than grey here. But I want that as the base for her cloth and her wings and the, the doves as well that are flying around because I'm going to be using some contrast paints on the wings. But I also want even her red cloth to be a little bit brighter than the rest of the armies. Again, we want her to stand out, but not by compromising the amount of time that we want to spend on the miniature too much either. So at this stage, with all the old one grey down and dry, we're going to move on to another contrast paint and we're going to go with our Blood Angels red for our cloth. So as before, with the other miniatures that we've painted, it's just going to be a case of carefully going in with our Blood Angels red and just painting in all of our cloth. While we're waiting for the uh, Blood Angels Red to completely dry, we're going to quickly go over uh, her skin. She's only got her face exposed or her head exposed. And for that, we're going to be using Katie and Flesh Tone. Going to keep it nice and simple as we have before, except we're actually putting a base layer down on the skin this time instead of on the other miniatures where we were just letting our um, primer and pre shade do most of the work. So in this case, we want. Our, um, our Celestine in inverted commas to have a bit of a, a higher finish, a bit of a better looking skin tone uh, than the others in the army. So go on ahead. And we'll probably give her a couple of coats of this just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. With the skin down, the red still not entirely dry, we're going to quickly move on to our wings. And because our wings have already been given the Ulthuan Grey base coat, we're going to move on to a contrast paint, which is Griff Charger Grey. We're going to be thinning this a little bit on the palette because we don't want it to be as strong as it is. So I'm just going to dampen the brush a little bit. And what we want to achieve with this is to shade uh, our wings a little bit. So let's have a look and see what we get. I think already a bit too heavy. We'll just start working it into the feathers. And this is where the, the quality of Raging Heroes um, character miniatures really shines through. There's enough detail in there for the contrast paint to really do a lot of the work for us. So that we can just get in there and focus on putting the color down. And we get a good effect pretty much immediately. With the Griff Charger Grey down on her wings, we're going to quickly cover the flesh again, and we're going to be using Gilliman Flesh Contrast Paint for that. So pretty straightforward again. We're just going to take it and uh, just give her skin one coat of this, just to help shade it in a little. I'll also mention that on the Griff Charger Grey, I've also painted the doves around her as well and the one flying from her hand just to let you know that's that was part of the process there too okay we're now at the stage where we're going to have to let everything settle we're going to leave it about an hour or so to make sure all the contrast is dry and when we come back from that we're going to be looking at the gold trim around the the red we're going to be looking at her hair as well, which is probably going to be another contrast paint. And we're going to look at highlighting up all the wings and the doves, uh, as well as any other little details that we've missed. With our contrast paint mostly dry, the red's definitely dry at this point. We're going to move on to some of the golden trim on her uh, red cloth. I can't remember, is it robes or cloak or whatever? And we're going to use our typical bright gold for this one. So we're going back to the, the colors we've used previously. Um, because I want to keep a bit of consistency in the style of certain parts while her armor looks a bit more standout-ish, bit different. So it's going to be a case of just going through this and carefully picking out all the areas that we want gold. We're going to be making the band of gold across there, so we'll be completely painting this band in with the beading on the top and the bottom and paying particular attention to any details that are beyond those as well, so like the fleur-de-lis that poke out from it. And it's just going to be a case of going around and just base coating these in 
with this bright gold. So with the red drying, we're moving on to a dry brush here and the dry brush is Praxetti White. And I've already started it um, just to get the process going. So I've been using my large dry brush here on some paper and then on the wings, make sure that there's not too much on the brush. We're just letting the brush pick out the uppermost details all across the wings. So we're going to move on to her hair. And for her hair, we're going to be using Black Templar. Just keep it nice and simple. Give a, a little flash of dark color in amongst all what is essentially a very bright miniature. So this will give us a decent contrast. Got to be careful not to get it onto the face or onto the wings. Just taking our time. Once that's dry, that should look quite good. And then the next thing we need is another contrast paint. After a bit of fumbling around, I find my skeleton hoard, and that's the next color we're going to use. And that is going to be focused entirely on the gold edging on the robe. So once again, we'll get this brush, take the water off of it. And then it's just going to be a matter of just applying that into those gold details and just letting it settle. So for our next couple of steps, we're going to be looking at the silver for her blade and a few of the chains that are hanging off of her and the colouring on the uh, the sword uh, handle. Uh, bleh, I, can't, I can't speak today. Um, <clears throat> We're going to be finishing off the sword and then after that we're just going to paint what little piece of terrain is down here uh, in a little bit of a brown and that's basically as far as the miniatures the miniature needs to go uh, for the project so for the silver we're going to be using vallejo oily steel uh, i've recently started using it and quite like it a lot quite like the vallejo metallics so we'll get ourselves a brush here And then we're just going to paint in her blade. Being careful not to get up onto the gold detail. And then we're going to move on to the chains. So she has a couple of chains hanging off the sword. I think that's good for all the chain. So clean the brush off. And we're going to pick a nice contrast paint for her sword back here. And I think for that, we're going to go with Magos Purple just to add a splash because we do have purple across some of the other miniatures as well, miniatures that have like roses and flowers on them. So we're going to go with a similar sort of purple. Uh, for the base of her sword. Sort of just keep the theme going more than anything else. That should do the trick for that. Now, there's a little skull down here that we have that's on the base of one of the chains that we just painted. And you'll also notice that there was a couple of pieces of parchment just around her cloak around her thighs here. And uh, we're, I would already painted those in. So we're going to paint the skull in the same manner. And for that, we're going to be using Citadel Morgast Bone. So nothing too spectacular there. It's good just to, if you miss a little detail, we'll just, because we're using such a simple scheme, we can just dip back in again and very quickly add something we feel we've missed. So what I'm going to do off camera while this is all drying is paint the base, which is just a 
a medium brown because the the actual basing of the army is pigments and stuff involved in it. So it'll be a fairly um, medium sort of brown. And uh, when we come back, we'll look at just adding a little bit of wash to the silver that we've done. Also, while I'm off camera, I'm going to make sure that I've not got any corrections that I need to do or feel like I need to do. So now with everything dry, we're going to move on and quickly wash down the sword and the chains. And for that, we're going to be using null oil. So we'll just very quickly get that down. Again, it's just a case of getting in there and carefully putting the wash into the links of the chain. And then same on the sword. And I've decided I'm not going to put the null oil onto the blade itself. I'm actually going to use a contrast paint. Okay. Then we'll move on to our contrast paint. Put that away. And for the contrast paint, we're going to use ethermatic blue because again, I want a more sort of maybe a bit of an energized blade for this. So it's going to be pretty straightforward yet again. Just a case of running it along each side of the blade and then just letting the contrast paint settle whatever way it wants to settle. So with that done, we're going to let that dry and then we'll take a look at the miniature once it's all dry and we've got a good background behind it and that'll wrap the video. So here we have our Celestine stand-in and you know, from a distance, she looks pretty good. I think she's got plenty of detail in there that the washes have helped accentuate. The contrast paints, a little bit patchy in places, but to be fair, they look pretty decent. Um, overall, I'm most happy with the wings. I think they're a very standout feature of the miniature and um, her dramatic pose as well. I just love how dramatic she looks and uh, all the, the doves and stuff flying around her, I think look great. Now, obviously, we haven't done a lot of work to this miniature because we want to get an army done quickly, but we still want the army to look like something when it's actually down and deployed on the table as a whole. So what you're going to see is um, our Celestine here is going to look well with her two guards, but all the other uh, miniatures in the army have a very similar look with the white. So the white is a very uniform-esque sort of thing that ties in with the red on the cloth as well, and to an extent, even the gold on the cloth because they're all painted exactly the same. So when she's down on the table doing her thing, uh, ripping stuff apart, killing heretics, uh, I think she's going to look pretty good. And as always, guys, if you're following along with this, don't forget, this is only a stopping point. You can always go further with any of the steps that are covered in these videos. Don't think that this is meant to be a high quality, um, a high quality or a high end tabletop item. This is an army that we're trying to do with limited time and for example if you're wanting to take it to a tournament you're wanting to get an army done that's going to look okay on a on the tournament scene this is what we're trying to aim for here so you know your basic few colors uh nothing too fancy a bit of dry brushing here and there so don't forget about that keep that in mind as we go through uh this army and we show it off so uh thank you very much for watching as always and until next time take care stay safe and see you again very soon